Your news at 5 starts now. Should that chopper have even been in the air? New questions surrounding the fateful flight that killed Kobe Bryant as players back here at home mourn the loss of a legend. General Motors pouring billions into its own backyard. A massive investment is breathing new life into the Pole Town plant to make it the home of the cars of the future. But we begin with a man murdered at random at a Detroit gas station. Detroit police say that gunman then turned the gun on himself. This happened late this morning at a gas station at the corner of Finkel and Greenfield on the city's west side. Let's get to Victor Williams live at that gas station tonight with what police are saying about that attack. Victor. Yes, Jason Kimberly, this is absolutely chilling. It might look like this gas station is normal right now. People are actually going inside and purchasing items just like gas and other things. But we're told by police that someone randomly came up here, shot someone and then decided to turn the gun ultimately on themselves. Oh, it doesn't seem like these two people knew each other. Detroit officers say it all happened by chance. The murder suicide that occurred at this mobile gas station on Detroit's west side. The person that was walking up was shot several times and then the perpetrator turned the gun on himself. Police blocked off Finkel for hours as dozens of onlookers could be seen openly grieving the death of one of the men found on the ground, believed to be DeMarco Early. His family tells us he was such a nice person and did not deserve this at all. He, he didn't mess with nobody. He didn't do nothing to nobody. He loved his family. He stayed across the street. All he could do was go to Captain Jay's. One man could even be seen getting out of his car, crossing over police tape to get to his cousin. He had to be stopped by several officers. At this point, police aren't saying if Early was the victim or the shooter. Either way, it's been made clear that whoever pulled the trigger had no clear motive in mind. He was distressed. Something was going on in his head, and he, this is the action he took. And to make matters worse, we're told that Early's mother had just recently had a heart attack and she was trying to recover. So this is just horrible. Reporting live on the west side, Victor Williams, Local 4. Yeah, horrible indeed, Victor. Have we heard from the family members of the other person? Nobody went on record, but both family members of the men, they all showed up here and there was a little bit of a commotion in the crowd with them talking to each other. So that's all we know as of right now. All right, Victor, thanks. Three potential cases of a coronavirus here in Michigan have come back negative from the CDC, but another potential case is still being investigated this evening. The three patients, two of them from Washtenaw County and one from Macomb County, showed coughing and breathing symptoms. Tests on specimens from those three came back negative, but another person from Washtenaw County is being investigated. Test results for a specimen from that person haven't been returned as of yet. And beyond those headlines, China announced drastic measures today directly aimed at stopping the spread of the coronavirus. What they are and what experts are saying about the virus spreading without patients showing symptoms ahead at 530. And fears over the coronavirus sent the stock market sliding. The Dow got down early and never recovered, finishing down 453 points. Investors fear the virus could hurt travel and world markets. In other news today, it amounts to an historic turnaround for General Motors and it's only Detroit's it's Detroit's only assembly plant. The company is going to spend more than two billion dollars to modernize and turn the Detroit Hamtramck assembly plant into an all electric vehicle facility. Business editor Rod Maloney shows us how the plant is going to be rebuilt for the future. It's impossible to overstate the difference that is out here at the Detroit Hamtramck assembly plant when you consider that 14 months ago they were going to shutter this place and were very serious about that and now it's going to launch itself into being the most technologically advanced plant GM has in its system. The gloom hung over the plant for more than a year. The five week long strike last fall gave local UAW members some hope with word of that new electric pickup. But today GM president Mark Royce shattered expectations to build a new generation of electric pickup trucks, SUVs, and other EVs beginning late just this next year. 
Considering they built the Chevy Volt here, it's a good idea, but the cars they've been building, the Impala and the Cadillac CT6, aren't selling, and that's why Mary Barra made the initial call to close. But Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan said that he called her the next day invoking the ghosts of Pole Town, that controversial moving of thousands of people to put Deham in here 40 years ago, and he pleaded. But you've been headquartered in the city of Detroit for 100 years. We have a special relationship. If you're going to build the vehicles of the future somewhere, why wouldn't you build the future of the vehicles in the city? Right. It, it comes uh, along with um, a strong desire of business and government to work together, and that's what exactly what was happening here with the city and the state. And so, you know, how do we how do we grow the jobs? How do we put the investment back here? Well, you just saw a vehicle, a, a big shuttle vehicle there while the mayor was talking, and that's called the cruise, and or that is a cruise shuttle that they're going to be building at Hamtramck now. It's a big uh, vehicle. It will be autonomous. And uh, that's just one of the things they're going to build at the Hamtramck plant. And of course, it wasn't just the mayor that made this happen. The UAW had a lot to do with it, too, fighting in the uh, negotiations last uh, fall for the national contract to see to it that the Hamtramck assembly plant became what it is now about to become. Back to you. What about the electric pickup truck? Did GM give any details about that? Well, they teased us. They said, look, if you're not a football fan, but you're a car fan, you're a Detroit fan, you're going to want to tune in because they say there's going to be a Super Bowl commercial. You're oh. definitely going to want to see that is likely to feature that truck. Good tease. We will be watching. OK, Rod, thanks. And we only have to wait six days for it. <laughs> well, it was uh, another precipitous weekend. That's three in a row if you're keeping track. Uh, a big word. Precipitous. Thank you. Yeah, it was on nice. the calendar today. <laughs> but uh, uh, here, look, take a look outside and you can see it's the clouds hanging in as we start the work week. Yeah, they are hanging around here. Let's get over to Ben on a Monday. Are we done with the rain, at least for now, Ben? For now, yes. Uh, there may be a couple flakes around tonight and then we'll start talking about smaller words like sun and warm and Forget all those consonants, but it is all kinds of clouds out there tonight. If we see any flakes around tonight, they're going to be lake effect. Even though four live radar showing is pretty much nothing right now. Couple of the models just hinting at a little bit of moisture around at least through the evening hours and then dying down as we get past midnight tonight. So just a couple of flakes in name only if you see them. Uh, so be it, but uh, they're not going to amount to much cloudy skies for the rest of the evening. Temperatures down below freezing tonight. Most of our lows look that way, but the highs are another story. We'll see just how warm we get as we head into yet another weekend with rain and snow on the forecast. Four in a row now. We'll check it all out for you in just a few minutes. Jason. All right, Ben. In Washington today, it was the president's lawyer's turn to make their case for the president's acquittal. Meantime, there are new calls for witnesses at the trial after explosive claims by former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Alice Barr has all the angles covered from Washington. Good evening. The revelations from former National Security Advisor John Bolton's upcoming book directly tie President Trump asking for investigations of his political rivals to the withholding of military aid to Ukraine, though the president strongly denies it. President Trump's Thank defense you, team going on offense today, attacking House Democrats' impeachment case says politically motivated and too weak to meet constitutional standards. We live in a constitutional republic where you have deep policy concerns and deep differences. That should not be the basis of an impeachment. The president's lawyers insisting he asked Ukraine's leader to investigate Joe Biden and his son Hunter's business dealings out of a legitimate concern for corruption, not to influence the 2020 election, and that the investigations weren't tied to military assistance. Anyone who spoke with the president said that the president made clear that there was no linkage. But a bombshell new report involving former National Security Advisor John Bolton threatens to undermine that assertion. In a manuscript of his upcoming book, obtained by the New York Times, Bolton claims President Trump told him he wanted to withhold military aid to Ukraine until it announced the Biden investigations. So he ought to come in, uh, testify under oath. Um, senators should not wait until March 17 when the book comes out. I haven't seen the manuscript, but uh, I can tell you Nothing was ever said to John Bolton, but I have not seen a manuscript. 
President Trump denying Bolton's claims and on Twitter accusing him of trying to sell books. Moderate Republicans, though, say the revelations strengthen the case for calling witnesses. It's increasingly apparent that it would be important to hear from John Bolton. Senators Mitt Romney, Susan Collins, and Lisa Murkowski all signaling they're open to voting with Democrats to allow new testimony, a potential game changer in the impeachment trial of President Trump. Senators could vote by the end of this week on whether to allow witnesses and new documents the White House has so far refused to turn over. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. And as the impeachment trial continues, we're streaming all of it from start to finish live on ClickOnDetroit.com. You can find a link on the homepage. Still to come here at 5, he was caught in the act. New tonight, why the owners of a Ferndale smoke shop say they don't want this thief caught on camera stealing wallets to get arrested or face charges. And this Michigan priest is headed behind bars for something he did with bubble wrap. And here's Jamie. Little Caesars Arena lit up in purple and gold for Kobe Bryant. The Pistons players react to the tragedy next on Local 4.